and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. For today's video, it's another vlog style video for the weekend. I have things going on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so this is going to be a very busy weekend for me. I do have some personal things going on, but I do have a lot of jobs this weekend. If you guys are really interested in vlog content and want them to continue, definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up on this video. Also, about 70% of you that watch my videos don't actually subscribe to my channel, so if you guys are not subscribed, please do so. It would really, really help me out. As you guys may have known from previous vlogs and also from my Instagram, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, handle down below. It's just JM underscore artistry. But I hired an interior decorator and they've been kind of coming in and doing random things in my house. I have a whole accent wall that you guys might have seen in the last vlog. So right now, this is what my house looks like. Painters told me to take everything off the walls. So I took all the little um, hanging things and then I had to get my mounted TV off of there. So that looks completely empty too. And she told me to move all the furniture to the center of the room. So now everything just looks really awkward right now. There's actually a beauty clearance event that's going on in my town. I think the beauty clearance event is nationwide possibly. It looks like they just basically have this really, really huge RV and they are mobile and they kind of just go around to different areas and different cities. It seems like they kind of have more off brands of makeup, which is completely fine because you can find hidden gems. I'm trying not to go too crazy, but who knows? <laughs> I'm also meeting up with one of the photographers that I work with. You probably saw her in the last vlog. Her name's Brittany. I just got here. I'm walking up to the hotel now. It's at the Hilton Garden Inn, so I will talk to you guys when I get in there. Also, it's really fun because it's raining right now. Brittany. Hey. hey. <laughs> this is so exciting. Yeah. I didn't even have a I know. <laughs> oh, these look like little oh, cute macaroons. Oh, they even have perfumes here too. That's cool. Do you want to say hi to the vlog again? <laughs> you guys do a customer Griffin? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh my god, it's raining so hard. <laughs> I just got back in my car and I'm like soaked. It's gross. This is the things that I ended up getting. I'll do a haul probably a little bit later. Brittany and I were actually standing in line and we were playing the guessing game of how much we spent and everything because we kept just like picking up items. And I was like, oh, I think I'm around like 20 to $25 and it was definitely like $53 that I spent. I just need to run into Sephora really quickly because I gotta get a sheet mask from Tatcha that I usually do for my luxury bridal facials because I do have a bride on Saturday that's doing the luxury facial. And then I need to run to Ulta to get my eye patches that I usually do. I usually do the skin isolin ones because they actually adhere to people's faces. Hopefully I can just get in and out really quickly. And yeah, I probably won't be vlogging in the stores because I feel like I still don't do good vlogging in public. <laughs> Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. I just got back from Ulta and I also went to Sephora too, so I'm gonna do like a little mini haul in my car, I think, while I'm sitting here. First off, from the beauty clearance event, I got these puffs. So these are actually um, the little shower poof things. I actually got these for my husband. He's literally a savage with his puffs. I don't know if anybody else's boyfriends slash husbands are like this, but he's so aggressive with his. So every single time he like finishes his technically, they're all over the place. Like the netting's all over. It's pulled out completely. I don't know what happens. Then I actually found this really cute headband. Brittany and I both got matching ones and I think they're so cute. I always like to have headbands whenever I'm doing my makeup personally and I'll just use it to push back my hair. And then I also got a couple of different makeup remover wipes. I don't ever use these on clients, by the way. I usually just use these if I get stuff in my hands or if um, like I need to remove swatches or something. So I got ultra calming ones and then these are cucumber ones. And then I got two different face masks. I got cucumber and then I got a oxygen bubble mask with it's like a peach scent or something. I got a lip balm here. This is actually one of those roller lip balms. I believe that Smuckers used to make these, but this one's in a mint flavor. Then um, I ended up getting a lipstick here. This is more of like a kind of like a mauve like brown kind of color. I don't know how to describe it, but it looked cool in the tube. And this is a darker lip liner. I needed to have something for my darker skin ladies, so I decided to get this one, and hopefully it's a dupe for MAC Chestnut. That's kind of what it looks like. Oh, and I got another rollerball too. Um, this one's like in a tropical coconut scent, I think. I got two different waterproof mascaras. I will probably be using these in my kit because I do need waterproof mascaras. But again, I don't usually um, care what kind of mascara it is because usually I'm using disposables and then I'm usually going in with false lashes anyway. So usually mascara doesn't make a whole lot of a difference. This is my Sephora purchase. I don't know why they gave me like a JCPenney's bag, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So I'm doing the luxury bridal facial. 
on Saturday, as I said before. So I got two different of my Tatcha sheet masks. That's what I use for the luxury facials. And then I also ended up getting um, the fresh rose toner right here. This one's what I used beforehand. I used to use my cellar water, but I feel like this toner has actually been working really well for me. And then I got things from Ulta. So this is the only thing that pertains to my makeup kit. This is for the luxury facial as well. Got the Hydrocool Firming Eye Gels from Skin Iceland. And then I actually ended up trying two different new shampoo and conditioners. I got these ones from Briogeo. At one point in time, one of my BoxyCharms had Briogeo's hair mask, and it was from the same line, and I really, really loved it and loved the smell of it and everything. So I decided to get this one. So this is the Matcha and Apple Replenishing Superfood Shampoo, and then I also got the Matching Conditioner. That's pretty much what I got there. That's just a little mini haul for you guys. I just wanted to tell you guys what I was doing for the rest of the day, which isn't much. Um, I pretty much have everything kind of out of the way. I didn't have a super crazy day or anything, just doing a lot of personal things and running around and whatnot, so hopefully you guys don't mind. I'm going back to my house now. I will be setting up for a bridal preview. I've been having my brides come to my house ever since I've opened up my in-home studio, which I'm super excited about. And hopefully my house does not look like a hot mess because the gal painting is still there. I told her to do the entryway first, so at least she wouldn't be like in the entryway painting when my client came. She's doing the preview before actually booking with me. As you guys might have known previously, or if you guys have looked into my policies, I literally never do the previews before I actually book with somebody because I want them to be 100% certain before I block out that date for them. A lot of brides do not have an issue with that. Like they don't have an issue with booking with me, um, you know, in advance or anything. This Bride actually has had like two bad trials with other makeup artists in town. And I just want brides to have a really good experience. I mean, it's really frustrating when you're trying to, you know, get the best vendors as you possibly can and stuff doesn't end up working out and it just doesn't make like a really pleasant wedding planning experience. And I love to be able to be the artist you know, to be able to turn that around for them and everything it makes me feel really nice and everything because I feel like those clients are a little bit pickier and that's completely fine. Like you want what you want on your wedding day, but I feel like truly not all artists are meant to have that specific client and then not all clients are meant to have that specific artist. So like every artist is different and each artist has their own style. So if you look onto a person's portfolio and they have like all natural makeup, they're obviously an all natural makeup artist like I am. My best advice for brides, if you guys are trying to find makeup artists or anything, it's like try to hire the makeup artist that specialize in that area. Like you wouldn't ask a natural makeup artist to do a full glam look on you. Yes, as a makeup artist, like we are fully capable of doing that, but if that's not something that you specialize in, it's so weird when people just hire you for things that you don't do because you look on your portfolio and it's completely opposite and you're just like, why did you hire me? Sorry, I just kind of had to vent for a little bit, but yeah, anyways, back to the original topic. I am going to be meeting this bridal client at my house in my in-home studio and hopefully she really likes my work and I don't know why we are going so slow. Oh my God. Oh, people in the interstate frustrate me because we always slow down whenever we're getting off our exit and then people don't know what's going on because there's construction. It's fun. I'm going to go ahead and go home and then I'll show you guys kind of the setup and everything for me doing the client. And yeah, that's about it. the setup for today just got my kit all laid out right here then I have one of my eyeshadow palettes this is just my makeup forever magnetic palette I just have a random hodgepodge of eyeshadow singles in here I have my makeup forever Danny's pouch right here I split it in two so it's actually a brush holder but I use one side for dirty brushes and then one side for trash cans this is my dog poo bags as you guys saw before I use that as a mini trash can I put my disposables out here and then I put my palette and also my spatula as well all of these are disposable applicators, so sponges, um, cotton pads, things like that. And then I also have my brush belt out too. And then the only thing that I really do here is I made sure to clean and sanitize this whole entire chair. So I went in with disinfectant wipes and just wiped down everything just to make sure everything's clean. And then I do, for just the 
previews at least, I like to give my client a mirror the whole time. This is literally the only time you should ever give clients a mirror, by the way, otherwise it will literally take way too long. But with the previews, I really like to spend time with people and make sure that they're really getting the look that they want. So I do give them the freedom to pick up the mirror and just look at themselves whenever just to see, you know, if it's going in the right direction or if I need to change anything and I can do it like while we're progressing, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's what the setup looks like. And then I'm actually going to take you into the living room space because I have about 20 minutes or so before my client's supposed to show up. But yeah, this is what this looks like, guys. Look at how cool this looks. So I got my accent wall. You guys saw that in the last vlog. And then the painters did paint this table. It was kind of like um, a wooded, like gray kind of color or something. It definitely had like natural like wood grains on it and everything. And they did a really, really good job at painting this table. The whole entire thing just looks like a lot brighter and like a lot more open and everything. And I love the way that it turned out. So yeah, I can't wait until, of course, I get my long-awaited coffee table in the middle here, and that'll kind of complete the room. And then I just have to wait for the walls to dry to hang up things on the walls. So yeah, besides that, though, um, it's looking really, really freaking good. Look at the hubby. Don't film me. Look at the hubby. Stop filming me. <laughs> the hubby just hung this mirror. Look at it. It's perfect. Aww. Guys, he just complimented me. What do you want? Just got to put the decorations back on the table now. I have cleaned up my kit and everything from my bridal preview and the bride did end up booking with me so I'm super excited about that. I love when I'm able to connect on a different level with my brides and I can definitely feel their energy and everything and I feel like we are on the same wavelength. It's awesome. Again, as I said before, I feel like not all artists are meant to have certain clients and not all clients are meant to have certain artists. Everybody kind of just vibes on a different level if you know what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and actually get together my stuff for my wedding tomorrow. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start packing up my touch-up kits because I have everything else cleaned up. As I said before, I sanitized everything from the previous client. If you guys just want like an in-depth sanitation kind of video, I do have one of those on my channel. It is very old, just to let you guys know. So I was very awkward on camera when I filmed that, but I definitely can link that up above as well. I am going to go ahead and actually get out the bride's contract for tomorrow because I usually do bring the contract because I staple consultation sheets to the actual contracts. And it also will tell me how many people are getting their makeup done and also what their names are as well. I only have four people, so I have her who's doing the luxury facial, so it'll take me a little bit longer. And then I have her mom who shouldn't take that long and then two of the bridesmaids. So I'm gonna get out my little touch-up kits here. These are the mesh bags that I use. Got these off of Amazon, of course. So there's four, so I'm just gonna get out four of these guys here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get out my business cards. And I am completely running out of business cards. So I'm probably only going to be including one in each person's. I usually do include two, but I have to order more. I'm gonna go ahead and include the wedge sponges in here. These are for touch-ups. Gotta get four of these out. I'm gonna make this one the brides. And I'm gonna include a bobby pin here. I don't know if she's actually going to need one. I'm not really sure, but I'll have one just in case she does have dark hair. Then I'm gonna get out some oil blotting sheets. These are the ones that I use right now. This is from NYX. I don't really have a specific brand of oil blotting sheets that I like using, but NYX is pretty inexpensive. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on the back of my business card and then just use the bobby pin and just slide that right through. So that's kind of like the little packet that I give my brides. And then I'm gonna start labeling jars here. Gotta get two per person. You do not need to include all this stuff. The only thing you really need to be including in your touch-up kits is pretty much just powder and lip color, or you can do oil blotting sheets and lip color, just as long as they have something to like blot their face with throughout the day. So this is gonna be the brides, and her name's Tiana. So I'm gonna put Tiana lips and powder. I don't know what my problem is, but I keep spelling things wrong and I keep messing up the names on these jars. I'm just gonna add a few Q-tips here. You never know what Q-tips can be used for, so I usually like to include a couple of those in each touch-up kit. Need some doe foot applicators for lips. All my disposables I do buy from bulk off of Amazon. That's probably the smartest way to go with those because you get more bang for your buck. So I include a couple of these in each person's kit. I got these Neutrogena makeup remover wipes here. So I'm gonna include one of those. And these are single use makeup remover wipes. They're just in these cute little like individual packages. Like how cute are these? 
All right, then I'm going to just put uh, the powder in here. My bride tomorrow is a woman of color, so I'm actually gonna grab two different powder combos because that's what I used on her for the preview. So I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty powder in Blondie and then the um, darker powder from Juvia's Place in the shade Gobi. I mix those two together to create her face powder. Usually, as you guys might have seen before, I use the Laura Mercier powder on people, but I feel like even though it's translucent, it does give kind of like a little bit of a white cast on people if you have a deeper complexion. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and use a powder that suits her complexion. She did say all the rest of the ladies were Caucasian, including her mom. Again, I'm trying to create like a combo of the two powders here. So I got the powder in there. I'm going to go ahead and add that to her kit there. I'm going to get out my Laura Mercier translucent powder here and then I'm going to fill up the rest of the gal's touch-up kits. That is it as far as the touch-up kits. I just have all of them right here. I just wanted to do a little mini haul for you guys. I got this really awkward box from Friends Beauty. I did get approved for the pro discount through my certification with the Online Makeup Academy. I guess I'll first start off by like these little lashes. They kind of got awkwardly packed in here, but um, yeah, I just wanted to try out their lashes. To be totally honest, these lashes were a little bit longer than they looked like online. I was kind of hoping they were a little bit shorter than this, but apparently they are not. So I got the 415 lashes. They look like this. They're just like a little bit more wispy. Like they don't look like they're long right now, but like in person, they look kind of long. This one's actually for me. <laughs> so I needed more dry shampoo and Batiste actually is sold on Friends Beauty, which I thought was really interesting. Then this is actually something I was really excited about. So multiple different makeup artists have talked about this now, but this is the Ren um, Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic. And it actually has like one of those um, little things where you kind of just like push the top of it. There you go, it's focusing. So, I mean, it works really well if you just work out of a studio or something and don't, like, move, you know, physically. But this bottle is very heavy, and it is, like, very large in general. So I probably wouldn't stick the whole entire thing in my kit. I decided to try a brand called Sonia Roselli. I think that's how you pronounce it. First of all, I wanted to try this Tiger's Eye brush soap. Um, this is actually supposed to be, like, a very good brush soap and disinfect your brushes and everything, which I might try because I have... A whole bunch of dirty brushes here from my bridal preview earlier so i might show you guys how this brush soap works that'll probably be a good idea then i also did get um, another thing from sonia roselli here so she has interesting things like this so this is called the water elixir and this is one of her more popular products it's basically like um, a moisturizer and a toner i think at the same time i think that's how it is Let me Go ahead and open up the package. It's very, very pretty packaging though. So again, if you guys just want to buy this and everything and just leave it in the package, you can if you just work out of one place. But if you're a mobile artist like I am, may not want to do that. So you have to shake it first. You apply two to three pumps of the water elixir into clean hands, press palms together and press. Yeah, so it's almost like an essence where you kind of have to like press it into your skin. You can also mix it in with products it looks like and then it kind of makes the texture of it a little bit more lightweight so you can mix it in with like foundations and stuff. Anyways, I'll have to try that out though and let you guys know how I feel about it. Then I did pick up two different Inglot lipsticks here. Yeah, it's like a warm tone nude color. Oh, okay, I did not expect this one to be so pink. <laughs> This one's like pretty darn pink. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's 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 a pretty pink color. These are the two uh, swatches on my hand there. Then I also got more Face Atelier foundations because I did need to suck up on them. Also, I used to get the Face Atelier foundations from Camera Ready Cosmetics. However, Friends Beauty, I figured out, actually gives you more of a discount than Camera Ready Cosmetics does. So I'm probably going to be buying my Face Atelier foundations off of Friends Beauty now because they're a lot less expensive. And Camera Ready Cosmetics, I think you get it for around $28. But um, the Face Atelier foundations on Friends Beauty is like... $23 or something like that. So I decided to stock up on colors that I was running low on. So I got the shades 1, 4, and 0. Oh my gosh. All these messages. Sorry, guys. Sorry, a client's trying to book with me and I'm in the middle of stuff. No, I'm just kidding. It looks like they actually sent me a little pro, little, um, kind of like a welcome package. They said that it was going to include that because it's some sort of like welcome gift for being a pro member. And actually, 
they're things that I could definitely use because um, I did not buy any travel size mascaras for my bride because usually I use travel size mascaras as like little gifts inside of my bride's touch up kit but I didn't have some anymore. Um, so yeah, they actually ended up sending me a travel size mascara so that works out perfectly. And I got the Smashbox uh, Super Fan Mascara here. Looks like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this inside of my bride's touch up kit because that'll be a nice gift for her and that also saved my butt too. Then I also got the Embryolise um, Nourishing Repair Care. I'm not sure what this is. Looks like this. Um, I thought it was the Lay Cream Concentrate, but it's not. Um, it, they actually did give me a little travel size version of that one too. This is actually a moisturizer and you can also use it as a primer too. But I'm not sure what this one is. It just says Nourishing Repair Care for Dry Skin. Um, and this is the uh, Macro Vintage, oh, Cogendo, that's what it is. I was like, I don't recognize that name. It just says Royal Massage Milk, so is it a moisturizer? Like, I might have to, I might have to look this up. Then I have a Lorac Front of the Line Pro Eye Pencil, and I believe this is probably just in a black color, I'm guessing. Looks like it's just like a little mini pencil here. The little thing that I got in that little kit is the Makeup Forever Mist and Fix. And I literally can always use setting sprays, especially travel size ones like this. So I'm probably going to get really good use out of that. And the last thing that I got is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. And actually what's really funny is I almost bought like a whole bunch of these in Ulta yesterday and then stopped myself. <laughs> and this is in the shade Cans. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and test out this brush soap that I got. Sorry, I have to smell everything. So maybe like a woody kind of smell to it, but it's not like unpleasant or anything. I don't know how much you actually need. I feel like this does seem like it's getting very, very deep clean too. Just an update, I know it's dark, but this is what I have as far as the entryway table. It's probably not completely done. Um, I need to replace that lamp with a black one, either that or I might just spray paint it. I'm not even sure at this point in time. Yeah, I got that new plant there and then um, some books and a candle and everything. That's exactly how my interior designer set it up on her little like mock layout. So yeah, that's the update as far as the table situation. Alrighty, it is currently Saturday right now and I am headed to a wedding. I have my backpack packed with all my like essential things. I have um, brush belt and touch-up kits and everything like that. Then I do have to bring my light because originally we were supposed to be setting up in a room with a whole bunch of windows in it, but my bride messaged me last night, which was really helpful by the way, because I was not going to bring this. She said that we're now in a room where there's no windows or just no natural light in general. And then I have my camera stand to be able to vlog for you guys. And then I also have my kit, obviously. I made it here a little bit early, which is completely fine. I'd rather be early than late. That's the church. I think I can walk in through that door there and then I just got to figure out where everybody is. I'm going to go ahead and kind of go in, even though I'm a little bit early, I'd rather just, you know, obviously get there and find out where I'm going and get set up and I will talk to you guys when I get in there. Seven waves into the night on the beaches of Hawaii. Drinks and Ibiza, 
Okay guys, I just got home and I'm going to be setting up for a client that's coming over later. She's supposed to come over around 3.45, so I'm just gonna work on setting up right now. This is kind of a weird situation because I feel like her email was very vague. She reached out to me mm, probably like a couple of months ago or so for this date and basically asked me if I have a Saturday available in August. And I literally asked her three different times what it's actually four and she never responded to me, but she's been really responsive throughout the emails and everything. And so that's why I'm just like, okay, I don't understand what's happening. It's just like a really weird situation because like, I don't know what event it's for. I don't know what makeup look she wants. And yeah, so we'll see how it goes, I guess. Alrighty, it's currently the next day. It is Sunday. Sorry, I didn't really get a lot of footage last night. Something happened and I was just kind of really annoyed with it the rest of the day and I was kind of in a bad mood and I just didn't want to film when I was in a bad mood but I kind of just wanted to shed light on the situation. As you guys might have seen in my Instagram story if you guys do follow me on there, I posted that my client no called no showed me yesterday and I even confirmed with her two days beforehand to meet me at my house and I confirmed the address and everything and she emailed me back and said yeah for sure I'm gonna be there August 28th 3 45 p.m. done right and she never showed up. She never emailed, she never called me or texted me or anything. I really, really hope that there wasn't some sort of emergency that prevented her from being there, but I really don't think that's the case. Clients would get so, so upset if we didn't call them. Like if we didn't show up when we were supposed to on time, even if I was like five minutes late, people would still like ruin my reputation and it's such a double standard. I don't know how we're expected to not say anything about it because otherwise we seem unprofessional. I just wanted to set basically a standard for also clients too because you can't just do that to people. It would have been one thing if maybe she got stuck in traffic or something and then showed up like 10 minutes late or something like that. But it's like she never even reached out to me afterwards, like never said anything. I'm not even going to bother emailing her back because at this point in time, it's not even worth my time. And I'm still irritated about it, obviously. I didn't really think that this was a concern with random events like this. I do take the retainers slash deposits, whatever you guys want to call them, for my bridal clients. So like to book me for a wedding, I have to have a contract signed and I also have to have a non-refundable deposit taken. I mostly do weddings, so I'm used to having policies policies in place for weddings and everything because they are bigger events. But it's like the people that hire me for random special events. I just don't understand why people are just wasting my time. I literally sat around for like over an hour when I could have done something else. It's just really inconsiderate. Like it's really disrespectful of my time. And I don't want to seem too repetitive or anything, but from now on, I'm just going to start taking deposits from everybody. I think I'm just going to start taking 50% deposits from my bridal clients and also my um, special event clients too. I think that people will take me a lot more seriously and respect my time a little bit more if their wallet is involved. So I'm going to start doing that and I'm not going to be able to book them unless they do a deposit and that's just what it is. If they don't want to book with me because of that, fine. But at this point in time, I feel like I need to protect myself and my business and also eventually whenever I go full-time like that's my livelihood like that's the money I'm gonna survive off of so in case you guys are looking at this video and you guys are just starting your makeup business please take deposits like it's gonna save you a lot of headache a lot of you guys think that my business is super super together right now but I've learned from every single one of my experiences that happened like a negative experience or even a positive experience I've taken it and adapted it into my business so it's all a learning curve and all of a learning experience it's not like I just woke up one day and I had all these business skills like it's not that's not what happened. But yeah, just wanted to let you guys know the reality of being a business owner. On to a more pleasant topic. I am currently getting ready to leave at 11 o'clock. Um, it's about 9 right now, so I have a couple hours before I have to actually be there. But I'm doing a makeup lesson. I haven't done a makeup lesson in a really long time. I don't advertise it anymore because I've only done three total since I started advertising it at the beginning of last year. But anyways, that's what I'm going to be getting ready for now. So I've thought about doing a bridal makeup tutorial, but done it like in real time as in like I literally am not editing the whole thing. I wanted to do this though so you can see how long it actually takes me to do bridal makeup with lashes and everything. A lot of you guys were like, oh my gosh, how do you do makeup applications in like 35 to 40 minutes? Like, I don't get it. I literally just am analyzing people's skin and seeing if they need every single product that I usually put on people. A lot of the times, people don't even need primer on their face. You can just throw in a moisturizer. I actually use the Face Atelier foundation in my kit, which is more of a silicone-based foundation. 
but it does have a primer actually built into it so I realistically don't even need to use a primer at all when I use that foundation. So that's a whole entire step you can cut out. Also everybody always uses like color corrector and to be totally honest like that's not necessary. Like I had a person yesterday with a lot of rosacea going on and I was able to cover it completely fine with just the Face Atelier foundation which is about a medium coverage foundation and I just used concealer to kind of build up in the areas where she needed it and just kind of set it in with powder but everybody always feels as an artist that they have to do like every single step or something like that but I promise you clients will probably not notice. I get a ton of questions and a ton of DMs and a ton of requests you know, for like what foundation should I put in my makeup kit and everything. And I posted about this on Instagram briefly, but there's only so much with makeup kits that I can tell you guys. One product's not going to work specifically for one makeup artist like it works for another person, depending on how you work. With foundations, there's creams, powders, and liquids. I personally like liquids better because that's what I was trained with. I only use liquid foundations at MAC. I didn't dabble with creams or anything. So I'm not as comfortable using cream makeup as other people would be if they came from more of like a theater and stage background. What I'm basically trying to get at is that I don't want you guys to copy my makeup kit exactly. Like every single time I film Freelance makeup kit videos, I don't want you guys buying the exact same products or even the exact same kit as I do if it's not going to work for you guys. For instance, I literally started out with a huge rolling makeup case. I started out with one of those that has like a huge um, case with like drawer inserts in it and everything. You guys can stick products in the drawers. And it came with a set bag on top. Um, it kind of looked like the one I have now, but it had like two sliding trays and you can put things in the bottom of it. But literally it took one job where the elevators were broken in this building and I had to drag it up six flights of stairs and almost literally broke my back and almost fell down the stairs myself several different times to the point where I've determined that it was a huge safety issue for me to have a case like that. And then I ended up switching to one of those MAC travel cases and that one almost kind of looks like a duffel bag kind of and it just has like a bunch of like clear pouches inside of it that velcro to the sides of it. That one was fine and all but then I feel like I couldn't fit enough stuff in that and everything was like in pouches. But after the MAC travel case I decided to switch over to the set bag that I have now from Relavel and that one's honestly worked the best for me. I just love it because literally I take everything out of the top of the little zipper case and then just push it up and everything and then all my products are laid out. I can see everything clearly so I know what I'm grabbing. So that's then the best bag for me personally but if you guys don't work that way and like having things in pouches do that. Like it's not like one artist has better answers or a better technique over the other one. Everybody's kind of just more so just giving ideas and everything, so just do what works for you. I just want to let newer artists know that you don't literally need to start off with a perfect makeup kit to begin with. You just see these people with like all these amazing products in their kit and everything and you're like, how do they do it? Every single time, obviously, that you get new clients and everything, you're going to be making money and then you use that money to buy more expensive products. It's very expensive to start your kit anyways, even if you just start with a whole bunch of drugstore stuff, like it's still really pricey. So whenever I tell people, you know, that I'm making this much off of a wedding, they're like, oh my gosh, that's so much money. I'm like, it's really not because I'm investing like half of it back into my kit or I'm investing it back into like my website or advertising or something like that. I mean, it's not like I'm making that whole entire amount. So that's why it's also really nice whenever clients do end up tipping me. I never expect tips or anything, but it's just very helpful because I'm literally not pocketing that full amount. I feel like with actual freelancers, they're not either taken as seriously or not, I guess, given as much money as actual salons do, which isn't right. Because I feel like as a freelancer, you actually do so much more for your clients because you're responsible for all the business stuff on the back end. And you have to, you know, advertise yourself and everything. You're not just handed your clients. But I think all the clients see is that with freelancers, you know, you're making the full money off of the application fee, whereas people in salons are only making a commission off of the price of the application. And I just wish that clients would, like, realize that we're not pocketing the whole entire amount. Like, we're literally putting the rest toward our businesses. <laughs> What's you doing? Hello. Oh, hello, baby girl. My lab just came in here and wanted to comfort me. Yeah, I just want to make it known that not all freelancers start out 
you know, right away with a whole bunch of stuff in their kits and everything. It takes a lot of time to progress, but I feel like a lot of people, you know, are just seeing what they do on social media and everything. And they're just like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming and I get it. And a lot of people just are like, you know, wanting to be perfect before they launch their business and you're not going to be. So just launch it, just do it. <laughs> and then kind of just start adapting. You're gonna waste a lot of money to start out with. I will let you know, like, I mean, there's so much money that I wasted and lost and everything when I first started out with my business because I had no idea how to run it. And there was a lot of things that I invested my time in that I probably should have spent doing. But then some things ended up working really well for me. And then I kind of just started kind of piggybacking off of those things and then learned other things from different artists and talking to people just kind of like how you guys do whenever you direct message me on Instagram. Just take advice from other people. I think that's like probably the best thing I can probably suggest is just learn from others, but don't exactly copy them. You know what I mean? Like don't copy their style. Don't copy their aesthetic. Don't copy their kits or like how it's set up and everything. Just kind of get inspiration from them more so and then become your own artist. If you're makeup looks like another person's or something or your kit looks like another person's all people are going to see is that you're, there's nothing really distinguishing you from one artist to another but you want to stand out or you want to have some sort of like signature look that you're known for for instance like i'm really known for the natural makeup looks that are more glowy and effortless and the skin's really perfected and i usually go in like a more um champagne gold brown kind of family and around in my area there's really nobody that's known for that like there's a bunch of people on instagram obviously and across the world that do the same thing because natural makeup looks are very popular right now but as far as my area i'm one of the people that are more known for a natural makeup look like all the rest of the artists in my area are a little bit more dramatic with things or they're a little bit more glam and they don't just have like one particular style. But now I'm getting clients that are starting to hire me specifically for my style. Again, if you guys have any questions, I'm just a person. To be totally honest, like I don't really even see myself as a YouTuber. And it's honestly kind of cringy for me to even say that to people about like what I do. But obviously I get paid for it now, so it is a job. I just want to let you guys know that I am like a completely normal person. I mean, if you walked me up on the street and everything, I'd be friendly and say hi to you and everything. But anyways... Uh, anytime you guys literally want to direct message me on Instagram, I always respond to people. I'm not one of those YouTubers who just like ignore people's conversations. I even check my message request folder because that's like where my conversations end up a lot of times. Hit me up. Like literally, I will always be open. I check my DMs every single day. Okay guys, I just got back from doing my makeup lesson. It ran a little bit over as I thought it might. So I think it was supposed to take me about an hour, but it ran into two hours. I want to start pushing out more videos for you guys. I want to be posting actually around three times a week week because that would be ideal and wedding season is going to start slowing down after October so I want to make sure that I'm pre-filming for you guys because I know I want to try to push out a lot more content. I also really need to start working on those templates for you guys because I know a bunch of you guys have direct messaged me about it and I feel so so bad but I'm going to try to get them up um, probably by the end of this year hopefully around like November or December I want to say. I thought it was going to be in the fall time but I don't think it's going to be in the fall time at this point because I've just had a lot of things going on and I mean I know you guys are really understanding but I mean I probably shouldn't have launched that video so far in advance without launching it really quickly after that but I just really didn't think it would take me this long but I've been so so busy with weddings it's been insane okay completely forgot to make an outro again so it's now a different day <laughs> but anyways I hope you guys really enjoyed the vlog I'm so sorry it was so long hopefully you guys like longer vlogs I think I've gotten a really positive response in the past but just let me know if you guys still like longer vlogs I can definitely try to make them shorter but I feel like some of the content I really want to put in if you guys did enjoy this video though please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as also hitting that subscribe button down below I do upload a ton of makeup artist related content so if you guys are interested definitely subscribe as always i hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing day and i will talk to you guys in my next video all right bye